Good morning everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Shredding Skeptic. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game I've been, well, keeping my eye on for a little while now called The Long Dark. And with the Steam Summer Sale up and running and unfortunately coming to a close, I thought this one would be a great one to take a look at. And for only 10 bucks, it's a pretty reasonable offer. So what this game focuses on is basically surviving out in the Canadian wilderness. And as uh, a Canadian myself, I thought I might as well uh, take a look just to make sure that, uh, you know, at least environmentally this looked similar to what you might find out in uh, Canada. But I was actually pleasantly surprised to find, uh, a, I don't know, as best I could describe, a kind of graphic novel feel or cartoony feel to the, uh, the textures and the graphics, and I think it looks quite nice. So what about you guys? What do you think of the look of this game? Let me know in the comments. Similar to Stranded Deep, this game is gonna have the primary adversary be Mother Nature, but this one has the addition of some wolves. Fortunately, I did try it on the easy mode, first of all, to get a bit of a feel for the environment, and they just tend to run away from you on that mode, but uh, if you choose any of the other ones, they are quite vicious, and I would suggest keeping your distance until you are properly equipped. Um, probably a rifle. Now, uh, one of the effective ways of dealing with uh, wolves that I found was that if you're able to uh, chase a deer into their path, the wolf will often take down the Looks deer, like and then you're able done. to sneak up on the wolf, shoot it in the back of the head, and then take both carcasses back to your cabin for a barbecue. Keeping in mind that this game is early access, there are still a lot of features that are missing, but I am hoping they're going to be uh, added in in short order, but what they have right now is a very interesting proof of concept and a unique style of gameplay that really forces you to think long term and be very careful about the decisions that you make. There is no saving and going back, it saves automatically, and I think the only other way to uh, exit it is to die, basically. Uh, and I also noticed that if you sprain your ankle, it, is, it saves immediately, so there's no, uh, you know, breaking the ankle or having a bad trip out and then simply exiting the game and reloading. You're going to want to stock up on supplies. Anything that you can find, you just want to stockpile it because you never know when you're eventually going to run out or going to be unable to go outside because there is a blizzard or something like that. The clothing in the game uh, apparently does degrade when the wind is really high, so you're going to have to be able to find enough uh, other clothing material or cloth in order to be able to repair that. So in order to minimize the amount of damage you're going to have to end up fixing, I'd uh, recommend keeping it inside when it's a blustery day. For the Mystery Lake map, I found the most effective place to, well, set up shop was in the uh, camp office, well, which is maintains anymore. a pretty central location on the map and gives you good access to different hunting grounds as well as the lake where you can go fishing. Now, the best thing to do with the fishing seems to be recovering the guts from the animals, which you can then dry out inside, and they basically just take, uh, I think, a few days or so to basically just cure so that you can then use them on the workbench to turn them into fishing lines. If you find any uh, metal parts around, you can use those to create fishing hooks and then craft, uh, well, you know, a decent tackle that you can drop into the ice hole. And from there, you can pull out uh, a number of fish. Now, what will happen is eventually that line will snap and you'll basically lose the tackle, so you'll have to create another one. Uh, but by that time, you usually are able to pull a good half dozen fish out of the lake, which is usually enough calories to last you about a week. So what I'd suggest is make full use of everything that you catch and try to think ahead and maintain stockpiles. As long as you cook off the food right away on the stove, uh, I've been storing it in filing cabinets and drawers and all over the place, and it seems to keep just fine. If you do venture out to different areas, such as the dam or the trapper's cabin, you can also find some unique items, uh, maybe some better clothing or equipment, that will help you survive down the road. So it is kind of a balance between how much venturing out you want to do uh, and how much risk you want to take versus how long you're really going to be able to survive. Uh, for this particular run, I was able to do about 30 days. Uh, the first half of that was mostly just collecting material, and by the last week, I was essentially just eating and sleeping to, well, stretch my supplies as far as I could go. But in a later episode, I'm going to take a hike down the path and probably visit some of the other maps. So stay tuned for a later episode, and we'll take a look at some uh, other parts of the Long Dark. The concept of the Long Dark revolves around some geomagnetic anomaly that's caused all sorts of havoc on Earth, and there are all, all sorts of bodies that are lying around, so I'm not really sure if you're going to be able to hold out for rescue because things back in the city may be just as bad. So, 
as you can see here, my uh, little stash here on this carpet includes my flares and equipment and sewing kits, and then I got my water all uh, distilled and bedroll. Lots of campfire wood, because you're going to need that. Uh, my curing skins, and I just try to keep them in separate piles so I know which ones are done. Uh, workbench and assorted uh, work materials. Cloth, and of course, uh, hefty first aid supplies. And over here, we keep... Uh, the food stuff, so this is a lot of stuff I've just recovered uh, from around the, the map. And I have a filing cabinet here stuffed full of venison and uh, whitefish and assorted bass and things of the like. So each one of those uh, squares is about 800 calories, usually good for uh, a day if you don't really do too much. Unfortunately, you won't have to resort to cannibalism. Uh, I haven't had to eat my roommate yet, uh, and I can't seem to get rid of the body. So, <laughs> again, plenty of stuff uh, for us to do in this game, and uh, I hope to see you in a later episode where we explore further into the long dark. So thanks for tuning into this episode of The Shredding Skeptic.